So now we're going to begin our next section in Chapter 10, um, specifically 10.5, Comparison Tests. Um, this continues on from what we did in the last chapter, um, 10.4, about divergent tests. The integral test from the previous section is easily applied to a series such as the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 4 plus k squared. Because the integral from 1 to infinity of 4 over 4 plus x squared dx is a standard integral. However, using the integral test to determine whether the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of the quantity of 5k to the fourth minus 2k squared plus 3, all divided by the quantity of 2k to the sixth minus k plus 5 dx uh, converges is decidedly more difficult. For this reason, we developed two additional convergence tests called comparison tests, and we use one of them in example 2a to investigate the convergence of the problem just mentioned. As with the integral tests, both comparison tests apply only to series with positive terms. So the first test we're going to look at is the direct comparison test, or simply the comparison test. And this uses known series to test the convergent of unknown series. So theorem 10.14 comparison test says um, let series A sub K and series B sub K be series with positive terms. If A sub K is less than or equal to B sub K and the series B sub K converges, then A sub K has to converge as well. If B sub K is less than A sub K and B sub K diverges, then the series A sub K diverges as well. There's a conceptual proof in your text um, that you can look at. It's pretty brief, but I think the graphical proof that we're going to see on the next slide is actually better. So here we have um, an example where um, the series a sub k is equal to the function 1 over k squared plus 10 evaluated between k equals 1 and infinity. And the series b sub k um, equals 1 over k squared evaluated from that same um, interval k equals 1 to infinity. If we look at the graphs, which you can see right below in figure 10.32, you can see that... Um, B sub K, which is the top series here, is converging. How do we know it's converging? Because it's leveling out. The Y value is leveling out. We're getting to a horizontal line. Think of like a horizontal asymptote as we get to larger and larger numbers. Um, so we have a horizontal asymptote, which is showing that it's converging. And we can see here that the graph um, of the series of A, A sub K, um, which is below B sub K the whole time, series B sub K, um, is also got to converge. Um, okay, so this is a good visual proof that if um, A sub K is always less than B sub K, um, which it is in this example, and the upper bounded uh, of the upper function is bounded or converges, then of course the lower one has to converge as well. So let's look at our first example using the comparison test. <clears throat> um, example one, using the comparison test, determine whether the following series converge. Um, example A is the series evaluated from k equals 1 to infinity of k cubed over 2k to the fourth minus 1. And problem B is the series evaluated from k equals 2 to infinity of the natural log of k over k cubed. So as we look at um, both of these series, one of the things that we want to do is to see how the terms of the series are decreasing. If the terms are not decreasing, then the series diverges, right? Because if the terms keep getting larger and larger and larger, then we have a divergent series. So we have to figure out another series to compare this to. As we look at A and we think about as K goes to infinity, notice the very first terms are going to take over, right? 
So this is going to k cubed over 2k to the fourth minus 1 as k goes to infinity is really going to be roughly equivalent to, t to k cubed over 2k to the fourth or 1 over 2k. So this makes a good choice um, for the comparison series to use this series 1 over 2k, which is a divergent series. Um, now we have to show that the terms of the given series are greater than the terms of the comparison series because if the, if the series that we're looking at is greater than the divergent series, then we know it diverges. If they're less, we still don't know either way if it's divergent or uh, convergent. Okay. So the first thing we can do is note that 2k to the fourth minus 1 is less than 2k to the fourth. Okay, inverting both sides, we can see that 1 over 2k to the 4th minus 1 is greater than 1 over 2k to the 4th. If we then multiply both sides of this inequality by k cubed, we can see that we get k cubed over 2k to the 4th minus 1 is greater than k cubed over 2k to the 4th, right? This is our original equation. And this simplified is 1 over 2k. Um, so we can see that it, this, our given uh, series, is greater than the comparison series, which is divergent. And by the theorem, if a series is greater than a divergent series, then it also diverges. Okay? Pretty straightforward, but the, picking these series is really um, uh, the challenging part of this exercise in this um, set of problems in this section. For B, we notice that um, the natural log of K is less than K for all values of K greater than or equal to K equals 2. And then divide by K cubed. Okay, so again, the log of K is less than K. That's the numerators here. And so since we want to build this, then we divide each of the expressions by k cubed, okay? Well, k over k cubed is 1 over k squared. Therefore, an appropriate comparison series is the convergent p-series, um, 1 over k squared. And since 1 over k squared converges, and our series is less than that, again, if your series is less than a convergent series, then it, it also converges. And there's some more exercises here that you can see in the text. So again, remember that in using the comparison tests, it's helpful to feel how the terms of the series are decreasing. And hopefully you got a sense there of figuring out um, how we're going to pick the comparison series. I mean, it's kind of a, it's not really exactly an analytical art and it's not exactly an art art. So, you know, you got to um, sort of juggle around and think of it maybe like a, a game in a sense, like a video game. So next we look at the limit comparison test. The comparison test that we just looked at should be tried if there's an obvious comparison series and the necessary inequality is easily established, right? Remember that inequality is that if the upper series converges and the lower one does. And the opposite, of course, similarly, is if the lower series diverges, then the upper one does as well. So those are the comparisons of the inequalities. Notice, however, that if um, in the series in example one, where k cubed over 2k to the fourth plus 10, instead of k cubed over 2k4 minus 1, then we could not have used the comparison series. Now remember the way that we set that up was we started off by saying that, um, I just went blank, 2k to the 4 minus 1 is less than 2k to the 4. But here 2k to the 4 plus 10 is greater than 2k to the 4. And so what would have happened is we would have ended up with a divergent series on top and, a, and our series beneath it. And, and then it doesn't give us any indication of what's happening. We don't know if it's diverging or converging beneath that divergent series, okay? So rather than fiddling with inequalities, it's often easier to use a more refined test called the limit comparison test. So this brings us to theorem 1015. 
the limit comparison test. Let series A sub K and series B sub K be series with positive terms, okay? If the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k over b sub k equals l, if l is between 0 and infinity, that is, l is a finite positive number, then both series, then the series a and b, either both converge or both diverge. So again, if this limit is a positive finite number, then they either both converge or they both diverge. If L equals zero, um, then B sub K converges and A sub K converges. And if L equals infinity, then B sub K diverges and A sub K diverges, okay? So if we go to zero, then they're converging. If um, we go to infinity, um, then they're both diverging. There again is a proof in your book. It's kind of a conceptual proof with some examples. Eh, it might be okay to read through it. And next we're going to do a couple examples. So let's look at the next example, example two, using the limit comparison test um, and determine whether the following series converge. We have um, in A, we have two polynomials. And in B, we have the log, natural log of k over k squared. In both of these cases, we have to find the comparison series whose terms behave like the terms of the given series as k goes to infinity. So when we look at um, problem A, the two polynomials, the ratio of two polynomials, as k goes to infinity, the leading terms take over, right? So this is approximately equal to 5k to the fourth over k to the sixth which is um, equal to uh, simplification 5 over 2k squared. Now, while we have 5 over 2k squared, um, we can, the 5 halves doesn't really matter anything because we can take the 5 halves out and use 1 over k squared um, because we know that that's a convergent p-series, and 5 half is just going to change that value as a multiplier or coefficient to another finite value. So what we can do is use, uh, again, the convergent p-series 1 over k squared, um, and then use it in the limit comparison test. So remember that the limit comparison test is to take our function and divide it by another function that has a similar um, behavior, et cetera. And so <clears throat> we take our function, which is the, the quotient of the two polynomials, over our comparison function, 1 over k squared, and apply the limit as k goes to infinity. So at this point now, it's all about algebra. So 1 over k squared, of course, is multiplying this, the numerator fraction, by k squared. And so we get uh, this polynomial. When we multiply it through, um, you know, all of the exponents go up by 2. And we get the following polynomial here. I'm not going to walk through that. And we can see that um, by what we know about applying limits, if we divide by all of the, the highest power of k in the numerator and denominator, um, all of these other terms simply go to zero, and we're left with um, five halves. Um, we're left with just five halves because we're divided each of these terms by k to the six. One of the things we learned um, about solving limits in um, calculus one. <clears throat> And since we see that the limit is between um, 0 and infinity, um, therefore the given series converges. So this first one was pretty straightforward. Um, we simplified this as k went to infinity, used that as our comparison series, um, removing the 5 halves, and um, then we got um, a convergent p series. Okay? B is quite another interesting case. Okay, so notice that um, 1 over k squared series converges, but 1 over k diverges, and our series is between these two series. So based upon what we know about convergence test, it, it seems like we should use 
one or the other of these two series that we're between, okay? If we use the first case, letting um, a sub k equal um, our given function, log of k over k squared, and b equaling this first convergence series, we again find the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k over b sub k. When we simplify this, the natural log of k over k squared um, divided by 1 over k squared, we simply get the natural log of k, which equals infinity, which you would think that this means that, um, that the um, function would diverge. But remember case 3 of the, of the theorem says um, if if um, L equals infinity and B diverges, then A diverges, um, okay? But um, we have infinity here, but since one of these functions converges, the function that we're using converges, we really can't determine what's going on um, with our series because we have a convergent series and a, a limit as it goes to infinity. So let's try the other case where we use 1 over k as the comparison. As the comparison. So here, if we use 1 over k, sorry, this is kind of, I wanted you to be able to see that too. Um, then we get the limit of our original function over 1 over k. This gives us the natural log of k over k. Uh, which actually equals zero as k goes to infinity. Um, again, um, the case two here says if the limit goes to zero and um, b converges, then a converges. But since this function diverges, uh, we really, again, the d results aren't conclusive about our set. So remember that they both have to diverge or converge using this limit comparison test. And so on each end, we've had um, differing situations, okay? So that leaves us in a, in, in a little bit of a bind. Um, and so what should we do here, okay? So... I think I went backwards there. Sorry about that. Um, so the book, the text suggests that we need to find another series that's between those two series, um, that's also between these two series, and um, and the series they recommend is the p series one over k to the three halves. Remember when the exponent is greater than one. And so let's try this as a um, comparison series, making again our function log of k over k squared a and um, 1 over k to the 3 halves b. And so now we're using a convergent series. Um, it's greater than, um, 